Hi, this is Mr. Barron, and we're going to learn about molar mass. Just to review what we have learned in the past, uh, we've learned that a mole, one mole, is pretty much the same concept as one dozen. It's just a group of stuff. They're both the same thing. Now, the amount that each of these group of things are is different but there's still just a way to count groups of stuff. We have a fancy name for what that stuff is called. We call it particles. And you could apply that to the concept of a donut as well, where there are 12 particles in it. So I can use the dozen to count bicycles. I can use the dozen to count uh, donuts. I can use a dozen to count eggs, and I can use the mole in the same way. I can use the mole to count eggs, donuts, and bicycles. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to talk about the concept of what happens when I have one mole of one thing. Say I have one mole of, uh, I don't know, bicycles versus one mole of pencils. Now, let's do a comparison between the two they both are the same amount of stuff because that's what the mole is. So they both have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever it is that we're counting. So one mole bicycles is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd bicycles and one mole pencils is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd pencils. But if you were going to compare the mass of all of these bicycles versus the pencils, the bicycles are obviously going to be heavier and the pencils are going to be lighter in comparison. So we have to know the individual weight of a bicycle and a pencil to be able to make this distinguishing remark about how heavy one mole of bicycles is versus one mole of pencils. So where that information comes from when we're comparing elements, say I'm comparing one mole of gold versus one mole of helium. That information, they're both 6.022 times 10 to the 23 things, but that information comes from the periodic table. So I see right here that gold is here, and I see that helium is here. This means that gold has a mass of 196.97 atomic mass units, and for helium it's 4. So even though I have the same amount of each, the gold is going to be heavier. Now let's draw this out below each. Now, for helium it's 4, and for gold it's 196.97. That number that's on the bottom is the atomic mass, but it can also be referred to as molar mass. And the reason it can be referred to as molar mass is because it tells you how heavy that element is if you have one mole of it. And we can use this information to convert between moles and grams. Molar mass, just a defining feature of it, allows you to convert, oops, spelled that wrong, convert between moles and mass and of course back and forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a bunch of problems using that concept. Let me take it and flip it over to the other side and then what we're going to do is we're going to take notes on using molar mass to do conversions. One of the things I like to write out is this formula and I like to write it out every single time because it gives me a guide about what numbers I need to use. So, I call this the mole road. And what the mole road is it tells me what information I need to convert between different units. When I go between moles and particles, I know I'm using that 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's why it's Avogadro's number. When I'm going between mass and moles and moles and mass, it's called molar mass. And molar mass, that information, of course, comes from the periodic table. Now, let's solve a problem. Say I have 5 grams of, well, 
let's make it lithium. And I want to know how many moles of lithium that is. So I know that my given information states that I have grams, so I'm starting at mass. The answer needs to be in moles, so I know I'm trying to solve for moles. This is a one-step problem. I'm going from mass to moles, and I only need to use the information from the periodic table. So all I have to set it up as is 5 grams lithium times fraction equals, and I write what I'm going to, which is moles of lithium. What I go to, moles, is always on top. What I'm canceling out, grams, is on bottom. Now I've got to find this information in the periodic table. So I look in the periodic table, and I see here's lithium. And most important is I need this number right here. And that number is 22.99 grams is equal to 1 mole. That's the molar mass. So what this means is that whenever I'm using the molar mass, the mass number on the periodic table always goes where the G is. Sometimes the G is on top, sometimes it's on bottom. But the number that comes from the bottom is always going to be from the periodic table. Now, by the way, I circled and showed sodium here. We're actually working with lithium. So lithium is 6.94, and then moles are 1. The grams cancel out. I go into my calculator, and it's 5 times 1 divided by 6.94. But we don't need to type in our calculator times 1. So it's 5 divided by 6.94, and I end up with 0.7 moles. All right. Now let's compare this to a problem where we have actually two steps. Say I want to find out how heavy, and let me write out my mole road one more time, mass to moles to particles, and I actually recommend you write this down every single time until you com become comfortable with it and have memorized it. Remember between moles and particles you're using Avogadro's number, and between mass and moles you're using the molar mass, and that information comes from, of course, the periodic table. Okay, now in this example problem, unlike the last one, we're going to start with atoms. Say I have 5 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. of iron, and I want to know how heavy that is in grams. Well, this time, I'm starting with atoms, which means I'm starting here on my mole row of particles, and I'm going to grams. So grams is over here. Now, when you set up this problem, you see that we have two steps. We have to start at particles, go to moles, then go to mass. That means I'm going to use two conversion factors. One of them is going to have Avogadro's number, the other one's going to have molar mass. Since I'm starting on particles, that means the first one I'm using is Avogadro's number. So let me set up the problem. 5 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of iron, Fe. And then I have two fractions I'm multiplying it by. And then I'm going to grams of iron. So the first step is I'm going from particles and I'm going to moles. Or I'm starting at particles and going to moles. That means this needs to be canceled out. Remember, atoms is a type of particle. So I'm going to write atoms on bottom, and I'm going to moles, so I'm going to write moles on top. I know that we have to use Avogadro's number, and students make mistakes. They often think Avogadro's number goes on top always. That's wrong. In this case, we need to cancel out the particles. It's always going to be 1 for mole, and then the atoms, or the particles, is always going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, we've gone to moles. Now we're going from moles to mass. That means this mole needs to be canceled out, so I'm going to put it on bottom. And I'm going to grams, so I'm going to put grams on top. Remember, moles is always 1. Now I'm using the molar mass, the periodic table number. So I look in the periodic table, and I see that iron has a mass of 55.85 grams per mole. So I write out 55.85 grams up top. When I type this into my calculator, I get, and remember, when you're typing this in, you want to make sure that you're hitting the E button and not using the caret button. So you, on this problem, you're going to hit, let's see here, let me clear what I've got. All right, so 5E23, and I don't need to bother typing in the 1 in my calculator, so divided by 6.022E23, enter. Now I have to multiply it by the molar mass, so it's times 55.85, and I end up with an answer of 46.37. And if we were rounding, 
two sig figs, we'd round this to 50 grams of iron. Because my starting information had only one sig fig, I needed to round this to one sig fig. The six bumps it up and I have 50 grams. Now the last thing I want to show you is what do you do if you're counting molecules and you're not counting uh, atoms like we have been. So we're going to do an example where we have to find the molar mass because it's not just given to us on the periodic table. Now, say we need to find out the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Well, I look in the periodic table and I don't see carbon dioxide on here, but I do see carbon and I see oxygen. So I'm going to write those down. So carbon on the periodic table, I'm just going to draw, down, draw out its element square. So there you have 6C and then 12.01. And then oxygen is 8 and then 16.00. So I know I have, looking at this formula, I have just one carbon. So I'm just going to write out the mass of one carbon out, 12.01. And I see I have two oxygen atoms. Mass of oxygen, 16. Since I have two of them, I have to add two 16s. So the molar mass for this problem would be 12.01 plus 16 plus 16. And that gives me 44.01. And that is the molar mass for carbon dioxide. It is 44.01 grams equal to one mole. Now, once you have this information, you can actually convert between moles and mass for a molecule, which is different than converting it for an atom. So if I have five grams of carbon dioxide, and I want to go to moles of carbon dioxide, I put my units on top and on bottom like I usually do. Moles is always one, but now my molar mass comes from this number because I had to add up all the atoms that make up that molecule. So my molar mass in this problem is 44.01. You divide these two numbers and you have your answer.